If only walls could talk, they would tell of much excitement when a young couple with a beautiful baby daughter, 16 months old, moved into their new home. One of few homes scattered in the dust bowl of Woden Valley, May 1968. If only walls could talk, they would mention the arrival of two gorgeous baby boys within 14 months of each other, bringing lots of nappies, breastfeeds, screams and laughter. During this time, our plot was transformed with lawn, trees and shrubs, paths and rock walls, plus a garage, decking and pergola. Then in moved the lovable pets, Ben, Sam, Tammy, Cindy, Princess, Budgies, White Mice, Goldfish, Leo, Wally, Billy and Mason. If only walls could talk, they would tell of Al finding an advertisement in the letterbox promising comfort from the scorching summer heat and the icy chill of winter. After considerable chatting, we contacted Mr Fluffy, resulting in a never-ending story. If walls could only talk, they'd mention discussions about Elf's parents' health. They moved in and watched as an extension went up in 12 weeks for them. Now we were seven. Over time, they moved into a nursing home. If only walls could talk of our three children going through school and college, graduating and spreading their wings, moving in and out several times using Dad's van to shift their stuff, they would tell great stories. If only walls could talk, in February 1992, our apple cart was upset with authorities insisting we move out for six weeks during an asbestos clean-up. This affected us immensely because we ran a registered business from our workshop. What an upheaval! Everything into boxes and a double tent put over our home. Job done and we moved back. If walls could talk, they would say this was worse than moving into a new home. If only walls could talk, they would tell of a sad terminal diagnosis combined with the happiness of laughter with grandchildren. I cared for my husband through his final years with support from my adult children and their families. He passed peacefully January 2014. A family that was once seven, now just one. If Waltz could only talk, they would tell of a letter I received in February 2014, a month after my husband's death, something about asbestos. With more mail arriving, the outcome was not looking good. Authorities would be demolishing all asbestos-affected homes, and mine was one of them. The days of If Only Waltz Could Talk will soon be over, as walls become abandoned, then demolished leaving just our plot to be scraped back to the dust bowl of Woden Valley. <laughs> <laughs>